Hey, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I got some more heartbeat moments for you and I got some amazing stuff to give away and it's not even my stuff. What, I, what I've got here is I've got 20 moments from a guy named Learn by Leo and this guy is an awesome video editor and he's going to show you how to make incredible edits and not only that, he's going to tell you the reasons why. And then to make it even better, he's got free asset packs for you that you can download. I'll put links in the description below. These are his asset packs. I did not make them. They're completely free. There's hundreds of things in there. Sounds, sound effects, music, motion graphics, motion graphic templates, all that stuff in there on the house free. This is an amazing video. So join me as I show you some of the best moments from his video. And this guy, he's got just under 20,000 subscribers, which is, you know, not bad. But here's the thing. He's got four videos on his channel. This guy swings a big hammer, if you know what I mean. So anyways, his video is called How to Edit So Good Your Viewers Get Addicted to Your Videos. And this video is the real deal. Let's go. All right, so if you're following along, I am on the using the heartbeat tool here. H dot K I nice and simple or H key as George says and on the left side I'm going to click on my heartbeat then I'm going to click on moments and you're going to see here that I've got about 24 moments actually from this 23 part of me but this video is so good and he also gives you all those free assets don't get me wrong I think there's over 100 assets right out of the box but this video is so good that everything he says in this video is good especially if you're a YouTube YouTuber and you make YouTube videos you got to watch this. So let's kick it off with his four pillar formula. Here we go. Imagine your editing is so good that your viewers can't resist watching until the end. That's a big claim. I'm going to go on the record here, but he backs it up. Here we go. I want that for you. So I've boiled down my years of editing experience into a four pillar formula. By the way, you'll have to take notes today because we are going way deeper than basic things like cutting out dead space. Ed and he's not lying about this. And to show you just that, let me show you another, let me show you his channel here, Learn by Leo. Now, this guy has four videos up. And I mean, the lowest one is 68,000 views. The highest one's 255,000 views. He's got just under 20,000 subscribers. And I mean, four videos. So yeah, I mean, this guy walks the walk. Let's go back to, let's go back to the heartbeat tool. Skip forward to pillar one. A great editing style may get you perfect watch time and millions of views, but it may also leave you with terrible view counts and broken dreams. To figure out why, let's start with this. So in this next bit, he's going to show you the difference between Sam Sulik, who has one style that's way to the left, and then he's got Mr. Beast, who's way to the right. And he's going to dis differentiate between the two and show you both. Well, both are viable given what your market or what your viewer is looking for. So here we go. It's just this guy, Sam, in his car talking and then working out. The video lasts 26 minutes but has just 17 cuts and no other form of editing. How 17 cuts in a video that long. That is 90 seconds for every cut. Now, if you think about a Mr. Beast video, he has a cut or a transition or a motion graphic or something blinking or flashing or something every 2.3 seconds, I believe. So they are completely, uh, complete contrast. So there you go. Uh, let's skip forward now. We're going to cut out the boring parts, which is the next one. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and click on a minute four. So we're just going to skip forward a few seconds here. Sam did edit. He cut out all the boring parts that the yeah. viewer didn't come to see, but he left it at that because his viewers aren't looking for a super stimulating experience. They just want to feel like they're spending time with someone. Incredibly good point. There are long form videos that if it's a personality driven video and this Sam Zula guy must have a hell of a personality, but if that's your style or if that's what you're going for, then all of those crazy cuts that you see in some of the newer uh, you know, I tried 5,000 hamburgers at a drive through That may not be for you. Let's skip forward now to the uh, Mr. Beast uh, comparison at a minute 29. And while Sam edits with an average of 90 seconds yeah, between 90 seconds. cuts, Mr. Beast does quite the opposite. So if both editing styles work, what should you do? Start That's the question. 
Start with considering what experience your viewers want. Sam's editing tells us that millions of people come to YouTube to feel like they're hanging out with someone. Mr. Beast's rapid fire style shows that a ton of people go on YouTube for entertainment. All your editing choices contribute to that experience. For example, cutting out all your pauses so that you're speaking constantly is easily the most important thing for entertainment, but it takes away from authenticity. So that is a very interesting point. So if you do rapid cuts, it does make it more entertaining, like he said, but you lose some of the authenticity. And I mean, that should be obvious, but I don't know. I see a lot of people cutting videos and I mean, they're not just taking out ums and ahs. They're taking out like entire, you know, sentences to try and make it really, really rapid fire. And that can be a little bit jarring depending on what you're going for. So that's a very interesting point. Let's go ahead now and skip forward where he starts to get a little more technical and he talks about the different types of images that you might want to be putting in your videos and how to get them. I want you to look at this. There's a problem here. This is the timeline of a typically edited YouTube video. A couple cuts have removed the unnecessary bits. Fair. There is a tangent here that wasn't really relevant to the video's greater purpose. These cuts removed pauses and these removed bad takes. But in its current form, this video is doomed to fall short of its potential. Right, so that's an important point. It's not that it's a bad video, it's just not going to reach its potential. And if we gotta keep in mind that YouTube highly values watch time and people that click off of a video for whatever reason, if they get bored or if they already know the answer, you could lose them. So this is a very important point and he's gonna discuss this here. And uh, and this one's, this heartbeat moment's called lack of visuals and this is an example. The reason is this video isn't using its visuals to maximize attention. Think about this, when you see a change in your vision, like something moving abruptly, it gets your attention. The same is true for watching a video. And here, there's only three different things to look at in the span of a minute. Kind of boring, but if the video were to switch between A-roll, B-roll, and other types of footage every few seconds, it would keep attention much better. So you see how all this is kind of coming together here? He's lighting up different colors here. He's got the wording coming in. He's got sound effects. He's got slight motion on it. You can see a little roll in the image or in the in the wording there. You can see the the uh, you know the A roll, the B roll, and the other you know assorted motion graphics. All of these things really really count, especially in today's day and age where a lot of people it seems have extreme attention deficit disorder, especially given the TikTok nation type stuff that's going on with all the rapid cuts and stuff. So just something to keep in mind. However, there is a drawback to changing what's on screen too much. Yeah. Try to notice it as we go over how different types of footage should be used to maximize engagement. A-roll. This is when you can both see and hear the subject at the same time. This is generally your main camera, by the way. So if you've got a camera facing you when you're talking, that is generally deemed A-roll. It feels personal and holds attention really well if you're speaking with confidence. Let's go to B-roll. B-roll. This is extra footage recorded separately from the audio. It creates a visual depiction of your words, letting the viewer see what you're talking about instead of just having to look at your face. This lets you get things across much more clearly and faster too. And, and all of these things are true and B-roll is actually very easy to get. Like you could literally just film your, you know, just film, film your, you know, film your room that you're, you're taking your video in, or maybe you're visiting a place, go film the, you know, film the signs around it. It's very easy to do. So just something very much definitely to keep in mind. Let's skip forward now and talk about motion graphics and stock footage. This is very interesting. We're gonna move forward to 357. And motion graphics. These improve explanation times a ton. Yes. Look at how quickly a complicated thing was explained in this new perfect video. Did you find something? Nope. I found a suspicious looking math problem over by the pool table and it appears that I need to use the pool balls and the numbers on them to form some kind of solution. You really need to understand how crucial that editing choice was. That was an yeah. essential but boring moment in the video story. Another really good point. It's essential but boring. The heart, the boring stuff matters. So if you are looking to develop a skill to help your video editing, Motion graphics is definitely one that I highly recommend and it's pretty easy to get started with if you have, even if you just use CapCut, there's a lot of things you can do with CapCut, a uh, free video editor that allows you to do this. All right, so let's skip forward a little bit here to five minutes 33 where he talks about 
the drawbacks between cutting too much. Now, you probably remember from earlier, there's a drawback to cutting between different clips a ton. All of this visual variety can quickly become visual mush if you're doing it wrong. Yep. Let's say you want to be engaging, so you're trying to cut between different clips literally as much as possible. You risk making things confusing, which hurts engagement. To avoid that, don't minimize shot duration just for the sake of minimizing shot duration. We see this all the time. I'm even guilty of this sometimes. You just... To, in order to make it look like it, something's happening at all times, you're always cutting and you're always, you know, using A-roll, B-roll, C-roll, motion graphics, flashy things. And just keep in mind that sometimes it's better to just run it, like run it for 10 seconds and then maybe make a cut or, or a motion graphic. You don't have to be hyper stim all the time. And I'm trying to learn that myself. So that's just one example here. Let's skip forward, though, where he talks about the power of visuals. It's a very good part of the video. Here we go bunch of visuals on top of your footage right many people make the mistake of adding captions just to jack up the visual variety but don't forget that drawback that we talked about using captions to fill in dead space can quickly become obnoxious and ruin a great opportunity to use a more engaging visual right exactly so what he's going to talk about here is six ways that you can get that you can use a, a technique like this and the six different styles. So let's skip forward a little bit here where he says you want to guide viewers to the focus point. This is actually a pretty good part. Let's click on it. They are showing an image to the viewer. If you plainly show the whole thing like this, it's boring. And more importantly, it's confusing. To I do this all the time and I've stopped after watching this video. Make things crystal clear and create some visual variety. Guide the viewer's attention to the focus point of the image. Here are six ways that I do that, which go beyond just scaling and positioning. Great. So here we go. Let's skip forward to the first ones here. He talks about color grade, vignetting, and particle animations. Oh. Another immersion hack is to just make the video look good. This could be color grading, adding a vignette, or some subtle particle animations. On the topic of making things look good, let's bring our focus to making things feel good. This next cool. pillar literally makes your video a digital morphine stream. Okay, so this is the third pillar, visual continuity. Let's see what he has to say. So we've talked about visual variety, but now let's talk about visual continuity. If you manage to create a seamless feed of visuals, then there's no rough edges, no areas for distraction to build up. There's no point where the viewer loses immersion. The goal for this pillar is to make every moment blend into the next seamlessly. The editing should be invisible. Yes, that's a that, every cinematographer, every movie maker, filmmaker always says the editing, if it's done right, you don't notice it. And that's the sign of an expert editor. I'm not an expert editor. I'm okay, but uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm working on it. So let's get forward a bit here where he talks about graphics on screen and how they must have motion before they appear. Any time a graphic comes on screen, it can't just magically appear there. That doesn't make sense. It needs to somehow move into the frame. Check the description for my free presets. Now, you don't have to animate things. You can also let something magically appear on screen, but then explain how it got there using a sound effect. I like to use this shutter sound effect, but a pop sound or something like that also works. Now so there's a couple things there. First off, you did note that he said that you can download his uh, packs. Well, I'm going to put links to his packs, including uh, in, in the packs, pardon me, it has a text, um, a text file that shows you how to download and install them. So... Just keep that in mind that that is included with this video and it's his stuff, not my stuff. So um, just something really cool that he's done there for us. Uh, let's talk about the audio side of things next. He gives a really good uh, description of immersive audio and how to do it. Pillar 4, immersive audio. Sound design makes the viewer experience every cut, yeah. transition, animation, and piece of footage through a second sense. It's literally double the stimulation and it can be used to influence the mood that the viewer has, which is an engagement superpower that we'll talk about more once we get to your music choice. But for now, cool. the first step of sound design is to gather a bunch of sounds to work with. I already got that for you. Start with that free sound design pack of copyright free sounds that I made for you in the description. So he made these sounds himself, as he said there. So these are copyright by definition. This is his own creation. So. Just downloading that alone, I mean, if even if you 
Even if you don't watch the whole video the whole way through, that pack alone makes it worth it and then some. And it, it's a great pack. I've got it installed uh, and I'm using some of the sounds now. They're very, very, very good. So we're going to skip forward here a little few more seconds and uh, he's going to talk about where he adds sound effects. Next, go through your video and basically just add sound effects wherever it makes sense. When something moves, you should add a whoosh sound. And when something's highlighted, a highlight sound. Now comes the engaging part. These next three types of sound effects literally yeah. hijack your viewers' emotions and suck them into the video. First are risers. They build tension and anticipation because they communicate to the audience that something really important is about to happen. But only use them if something important is actually going to happen or else they will lose their reputation and won't be effective. Next are hits. These release tension and emphasize moments, making them feel important. You can use these on their own or place a riser before them. It depends on the situation. Yeah. And again, don't overdo them. Finally, drones. These create a feeling of mystery and intrigue. They're reserved more for darker moods, creating a lot of... So there you go. Those are another three types of sound effects. Now, uh, they are all in that free pack that he's going to give you. So in a nutshell, that is pretty much all of the stuff that I really, really enjoyed in this video. The link in the description with all of the free sounds, the free motion graphics, all this stuff by Leo. Amazing video editor. I can't recommend this video highly enough. Check out the full one. Check out his full video if you got time. It's worth it. Enjoy the packs. Thanks for watching.